Hello and welcome to Strathmore's first online workshop series for 2018. My name is Kelly Eddington and today I'm going to show you how to paint a simple still life of gumballs. The reference photo and a template are available on the instructional sheet you can download from Strathmore's website. But really, this one is pretty simple. It's three sort of circles. You've got this. I wanted to demonstrate how to paint things that look shiny, and here's what I do. I'm looking at the red gumball and outlining all the highlights with a pencil. You can easily see a few white areas, and I've lightly drawn those, but if you look closely, you'll notice a pink triangle on the left and a big shape near the bottom that looks like a wave. And there's a little edge near the white gumball that's a lighter red. All of those are outlined. Sorry this is hard to see. I almost always draw lightly. Moving on to the white one, I've outlined the pure white shapes. We also have areas of red, yellow, and blue in the lower half where it's reflecting the paper and its neighbors. The blue one also has those two bright highlights along with a crescent moon-shaped area of dark blue. Below that are some interesting yellow highlights where it reflects the paper. And also I've outlined the shadows under each gumball. I'm using Strathmore's 400 series watercolor paper for this painting. It's available in a spiral pad or a block, and I thought I'd show you my favorite way to use the spiral pad. Next time I'll play around with the block. I've cut the paper down so there's about an inch between the edge of the paper and the rectangular border I drew. I like to be nice to my paper, so I'm taping it to my board. Cardboard is fine to use too. This will keep the paper from warping and the blue painter's tape will make a nice crisp border. It's masking fluid time. My applicator is that old brush you might remember from last time. You can use a toothpick or the end of a paintbrush or something like that too. I'm filling each shiny shape I outlined earlier with masking fluid. So all the white stuff gets it, but also the pink, orange, and yellow parts too. Since the wave shape is so big, I'm just painting a line of masking fluid along its top edge. This will create a sort of dam, you'll see. Also, I filled in the pink triangle on the left. On to the white one. Kind of interesting how if you really look at it, it's not that white at all. It's a sort of unnameable gray. I've covered the pure white areas and filled in the shape at the bottom that looks yellow. There's also an odd little yellow part on the left. And I'll do the same with the blue one. Using masking fluid this way is really the key to painting things that look shiny. It really works and it's easier than you might think. So I've got the white and light blue shapes above and I've made a dam in the lower part where things are yellow or a lighter blue. Finally, we can paint. I'm mixing a color called Opera, which is a hot pink with my cadmium red light. That's a blazing orange and together these two make just a nuclear red. If you don't have these two colors, just go with the warmest red you have and maybe mix some orange into it. I've painted the bulk of the gumball with this color and while that's still wet, I'm going to add some alizarin crimson, which is a dark, cool red. I'm putting it near the dam and letting it flow into my nuclear red and that makes a nice shadow. Don't be afraid to really put some deep color there. In fact, I mixed some dark purple with the alizarin crimson and that's going right along the dam and also up the sides a little bit. If you see a major line between your main red and the shadows, wiggle your brush along the line to blur it. Then just leave this alone to dry for a while. Okay, I'm going to clean off my palette and start with the blue one. Its main color is pure cyan blue. and Oh, I love this color so much. It's the perfect cool blue, and I've been using it only for about six months. In my eyes, this color can do no wrong. I've been using a pretty big brush for these gumballs, by the way, and that looks like a number 10. It holds a lot of paint, so I can fill these in quickly. For the shadow, I'm adding purple to the cyan, and boy, that makes a gorgeous shadow. I'm putting it along the dam and partway up the sides. There's also some pure purple at the darkest part. Then I'll just sit back and let it do its thing. It's like this paint wants to become gumballs. Now, I've got masking fluid dams everywhere the white gumball touches the red and blue ones. If you don't have that, please wait until those two are dry before moving on to the white one. First, I'm filling the space with pure water. This will help the colors flow. 
While it's still wet, I'm dropping pink and cadmium red light where the white gumball touches the red one. It wants to go crazy in a hurry, but you can control that by sucking some of it up with a dry brush. Just rinse and squeeze the water out with a paper towel. We've got some blue reflections on the other side. This is just a bit of the cyan and that wants to creep up into the gumball. It's just hypnotic. To make those reflections on the top noticeable, I need to paint some very light colors around them. That color in my photo is pretty difficult to duplicate, so I'm just using some cerulean, which is sort of a soft, dull blue, and letting it blur into the colors that are already there. I've got a little purple edge on the left. As the white gumball dries, the colors are not as eager to flow all over it. I have more control. I'm adding a little intense purple to the areas on either side of the masking fluid. I'll also put more cadmium red light on the left side. And then since this is the most complex gumball, I'm going to babysit it as it dries. By babysit, I mean I'm going to watch it carefully and make a lot of tiny adjustments to the colors along the way. This is just me being a maniac. You could and probably should leave your gumball to dry at this point. As for me, I'm continuing to add more purple to those dark areas and coaxing that blue up toward the center of the gumball. When I became a painter, it changed the way I looked at things, especially the way objects influence and reflect each other. The orange and blue on this white gumball, this kind of thing happens all the time, but no one notices it. But if you paint for a long time, frankly, this stuff is all you can see. I am knocked out by the beauty of stupid things like gum on a regular basis. I was so knocked out I had to get some lunch. I'm back and they're dry, and now I can remove the masking fluid once again using a rubber cement pickup to remove it. For larger solid shapes, I take my time and am a little more gentle. If you use a heavy hand with the masking fluid, it can fight you back and take a little of your paper off in the process. Okay, fun part. You know I can't wait to tackle that pink triangle. Using my same nuclear colors, but with a little more water, I'm filling in the shape and using my brush to soften the edge. Instant reflected light. I think the shape is actually a window to the left of my desk. Those same colors pop up at about 2 o'clock right along the outside. I'm using them to paint that little slice of a shape and leaving a couple of white spots. I've added a drop of yellow near the top and it will blend into the pink. I've added quite a bit of yellow to that nuclear mix and am painting it in the lower section including the wave. Kind of odd putting a lighter color in the shadowy part of a sphere, but the gumball is sitting on yellow paper and you can definitely see it reflected along the underside. This section is yellower on the right and left sides and redder in the center. Then at the very bottom of the gumball, you've got that intense red again. I'll continue to deepen that central area of the wave shape and blend any borders that seem too severe. I'm really happy with the way this is looking. These colors fill my heart with joy, and the paint is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with this project. It wants to flow together and create the kinds of soft transitions and reflections that are a lot harder to achieve with oil paint, for example. Moving on, we have a hot pink shape near the top and along the right side. Just above the wave shape is a spot that's pure orange. Then, using a brush with just a tiny amount of water on it, I'm going to go over the outside edges of the white shapes. This activates the dry paint and makes a softer outline. I absolutely love doing this. Finally, since colors fade as they dry, I'm going over the darkest part of the gumball with some more alizarin crimson. This is optional. Don't do it if you think your shadow there is already dark enough. Onto the blue one. I'm painting a pretty big chunk of that lower area, a medium cyan blue, and then I'm painting each end yellow. The yellow will move into the blue and it will become progressively greener and bluer as it reaches the center. Below this area is a sliver of dark cyan, and I will try to keep them separated for the most part. The smaller shapes above are much easier. Once again, I'm using a damp brush to either paint the shapes a solid light blue or else I'm creating fuzzy light blue borders around the whitest shapes. One small shape on the left gets some yellow. And along the top is a thin yellowish shape. 
I want that yellow section at the bottom to be brighter, so I'm going to try to lift the paint. To do this, you can paint water on the area you wish to lift and then blot it with a paper towel. It might take a couple of tries, but this will take off most of the paint and leave lightness behind. I'll paint this yellow later. Speaking of yellow, I'm going to put that in the bottom of the white gumball. This area is not pure yellow and requires a certain amount of fiddling. In general, I'm dropping warm colors on the left side and cool colors on the right and letting them mingle. It's all somewhat lighter and brighter than what's going on in the reference photo. I think this works, but I will come back and deepen those colors eventually. It usually takes several glazes or layers before I'm satisfied with something like this. I'm making a dark shadow along the bottom, softening a spot in the pink area, and then I'll add some yellow that's creeping up the sides. We're coming into the home stretch on this painting. All the hardest parts are over, and that's always such a good feeling. On a personal note, I think it goes without saying that as I put this video together, I chewed the rest of the gum, and it was delicious. Alright, let's tackle that yellow background. I'm using a mixture of cadmium yellow light, which is a super bright lemon yellow, and cadmium yellow medium, which is warmer and more golden. Use whatever yellow you have, but if it's too lemony, maybe add a speck of orange or red to it to warm it up. Make sure you mix enough paint to fill up your entire background in one shot. Always mix more paint than you think you're going to need to. I'm using a big brush to cover the territory quickly, but it has a nice sharp point so I won't feel clumsy going around the gumballs. Let's give them some shadows. Working quickly, I'm adding some orange and a little purple to what's left of my yellow mix. This makes a light reddish brown, and I'm putting it under the red gumball while the yellow background is still pretty damp. If your yellow is still shiny with water, just visibly very wet, Wait around until you have just a gleam of moisture on it. Two lights were shining on these gumballs, so that's why the shadows have two sections, one darker and one lighter. I've used that same color under the white gumball and added some blue to the right side. The blue gumball is influencing the color of that shadow. Its shadow is on the greener side, so I'm adding some blue to what was left in my brush and laying it on. There's actually some warmth in the darkest part of this shadow, so I've put red and purple in this weird blue mix, and then I'll add a little under the red gumball too. I'm painting darker accents where I see them on each shadow. The shadows are still on the damp side, so I'm going to continue to manipulate the paint. I've got some brownish shading on the lowest part of the shadow beneath the red gumball, and a darker purplish brown will go under the white gumball. There's a little passage between the white and blue gumballs and it's become too dark so once again using my dry or thirsty brush I sucked up some of that color leaving a lighter color behind and I've replaced it with yellow. I'll be using a small number one round brush for the next part. The nice thing about these gumballs is they're not perfect spheres. This makes them easier to draw for sure, but now that the yellow background is dry, I want to touch up some of the edges around the gumballs. I mixed small amounts of each color and carefully went over places that needed smoothing out. A lot of times shadows will tell you that you need to paint your object darker in places, and I've done that on the underside of the red one here. You'll see me paint darker purple and blue shadows on the white gumball too, along with some more fiddly stuff that is simply me being a perfectionist. But really, I do love painting objects like these, and I use the same techniques when I'm painting candy like this, or marbles, or glass gems, or jewelry. I always just outline the colors I see in a shape, put masking fluid on the highlights or oddly colored areas, and paint the dominant color over the top. Then I remove the masking fluid and deal with the highlights one at a time. It's so satisfying, and when you can make something look shiny, believe me, people will think you're some kind of wizard, which is awesome. So I'm going to keep plugging away at this white one until I'm happy. This paint fades as it dries, and that's a good thing if you don't want your painting to become too dark too fast. But it also means you'll be painting over the same areas multiple times to build up color. 
I think the white gumball is the star of this painting and I really want to show how the yellow paper and the other gumballs affect it. I'm telling you, once you start noticing reflected light and color, you won't stop seeing it. Some would say it's a gift and a curse. I'm sure my husband is tired of me pointing things like this out to him. As promised, I painted that highlight on the blue one a brighter yellow and wow, that made me happy. Finally, as a finishing touch, I'll take my old fuzzy brush and number one brush and with a tiny amount of water, I'll use them to soften the outside edges of the shadows. I think the slightly blurred edge looks more natural and it's just really fast and not hard to do. And that's about all I'm going to do here. This painting took a couple of hours for me to paint and I hope you'll work at your own pace and enjoy the process. And if this isn't satisfying, I don't know what is. Carefully remove the tape to reveal a crisp white border. Please have fun painting these gumballs and I'd love to see your creations. Thanks a lot for watching.